What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone is having a great and beautiful Friday. I'm coming up here to, I want to talk to you guys real quick about real estate, about how to get started in real estate. You would not believe, you would not believe how many, um, how many questions I get about this topic. And so I want to um, come here and share with you guys some tips, some things that I do um, to invest in real estate. Um, if some of the things that I have done um, initially to, uh, to, to, to get started in real estate. So I hope, hope this video finds you well. Listen, millionaires, millionaires, real estate is the most asset class where the most millionaires are made. So I want you guys, I'm trying to get my lighting right, guys. Um, so I want you guys to really hone in. If your goal is to uh, become a millionaire, uh, then this video is gonna be for you. If you love real estate, this is gonna be the video that's 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 really um, intended for you. So um, real quick, real quick, real quick, I wanna outline three things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight three things that you can do right now today to get you a million dollars um, very, very quickly. Now, let me preference that quickly, right? Let me preference this 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 idea that you can make a million dollars in real estate by saying um, real estate is the slowest asset class uh, or one of the slowest asset classes um, where you can make a um, million dollars very quickly. Now, um, you can make a lot of money very quickly, but making millions of dollars very quickly is not necessarily that uh, that easy to do in real estate. However, however. If you play the long game, if you can play the long game for a couple years, um, in this long game, I'm not talking about 10 years. Um, I'm not even talking about five years, really, right? I mean, you can, you can really do this in about three years. You can make over a million dollars in real estate if you just um, go, with, go with what I'm gonna tell you here. So, guys, I hope my lighting is right. I don't feel like it is. Um, so, um, it's horrible, but whatever. The content is the most, the copy is the most important, right? So, all right, so what, what is it? What, what are the three things you can do, right? Number one, these are the three things that you need to be looking for in your market, right? Um, number one, I'm gonna preference this by saying the more doors you have in real estate, okay, the more units, the more rooms you have in real estate, the more money you can make, okay? I'll say that again. The more rooms you have, the more units you have, the more money you can make in real estate, okay? So understand that, know that while you're look out there looking for real estate, the more doors you have, the more money you make. The same amount of time it takes you to, to, uh, to run one particular um, home with one door, um, it's the same effort, the same effort that it would take you to run a 16 unit um, a 50 unit, 60 unit, 100 unit of pro um, property, okay? Um, and, so, and in some cases, it's actually easier to manage a property that have multiple doors connected to it in one location, all right? So you have one location, you, you, you have one centralized location, so whenever work or anything needs to be done, um, management needs to be done, it can be done in one simple location, versus you having 10 to 15 homes in different locations, it is a strain on your vendors to be able to get out to the home to perform work. So that is why it's typically easier to manage one property in one location versus um, managing 10 to 15 units or properties in different locations. So while you're looking for this, uh, numbers, the numbers of units is the holy grail in real estate, okay? The more units you have, the more money you will make. Okay, all you have to do is do simple math. If you're making a thousand dollars per month in rent and you have, let's just say 10 units, okay? All right, you gotta do the math. That's $10,000 per month. But if you only had one home and you were only able to rent it out for $1,000, then that's only $1,000. So I 10X my money um, just by having multiple units, all right? so. The key, the number one thing I want to tell you guys, when you're out there looking for real estate, I want you guys to look for the most units, the most units, the most doors. Financing, it's raining guys, so bear with me, it is pouring down outside. Um, but financing, financing, financing is not your biggest concern. So many people get bent out of shape about this. Financing is the least concern 
that you need to have in real estate. Why? Because as long as your property cash flows, then you will always find the debt. You will always find the money for the property, for the asset, all right? Everyone's looking to, to, to uh, put their money to use, right? Not everybody put their money in the stock market. I'm not a stock market guy. I have some stocks, but I'm not a stock market guy, right? So I take my money and I wanna put my money into real estate. And as a matter of fact, I have my money inside of other funds, other deals, that's not really deals that I actually have or manage myself. So I want you guys to know that as well. Financing should not be, I want you guys to write that down. Financing, financing is not the way to get the property, all right? As long as it cash flows, the banks will give you debt on that property, all right? So um, one of the things that you don't wanna compromise in real estate, you don't wanna compromise location. All right, so you may say, Mike, what do you mean by location? I know everyone always here, location, location, location is the holy grail in real estate. It is, all right? Location is very important. Location is very important because, because property values typically go up the most in, in great locations. And in great locations, I mean great schools. Um, if there's a Whole Foods, um, a Starbucks around, um, if the quality of life is good, if there's a migration, a trend migration, you want to look at the trend migrations, so you can look up that. Um, there's a lot of different websites that point to the trends of where people are moving to, what areas of people are moving into. So you want to be focused there. So wherever you see migration trends, wherever you see there, people are migrating, wherever you see um, a Whole Foods or, or um, uh, I almost said Waffle House, but you believe that. <laughs> I do not mean Waffle House, by the way. Um, but wherever there's a Whole Foods, wherever there's a Starbucks, those are the areas where you want to be. They have already done the research for you. So why not pick the location where they have already done the research for you? So location, do not compromise location. Now, um, I'll do another video regarding um, underwriting, but I want you guys to understand that real estate is a numbers play. All right. You first have to find the deal. All right. You find the deal before you even get the money. You have to know how financing work. I want you guys to learn how financing work. Go to your local bank. Go to a bank. You can search for banks or lenders that, that underwrite based on the DCR. All right. The DCR is the debt to coverage ratio. All right. Meaning, meaning the banks, all they want to see is that the property cash flows by, tw by, by more, more than 25% of what the property, of what the debt is on the property. So for instance, if the if the if the debt is say let's just say very small number let's just say the debt is a thousand dollars a month they want to make sure that 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 you're bringing in twelve hundred and fifty dollars for that property for it because they want to make sure that it's cash flow right because they want to make sure that you're that you're able to cover the debt and you have additional um additional money to be able to cover um various expenses so um the dcr is going to be the most important thing when you're underwriting your deal because that's how you get your debt, all right? So number one, find the most units. Find the most units, okay? Two, you wanna find great location. You wanna be in the best location that you could possibly be in. And sometimes I, I, I would take a lower ca a cap rate, and the cap rate is, um, is, is really a, a metric to determine the value of the property, all right? So, and, and what your expected return would be if you were to pay cash for the deal. So. Um, I typically would go as low as 3% return on a property cap rate of 3%, right? But if you're able to, and sometimes in great locations, you will have a lower cap rate. So I want you guys to understand, don't be so bent out of shape about the cap rate. As long as you have a great location, um, it's always gonna, it's gonna cash flow. If you have a great property, great tenants, it's, it's gonna cash flow. Um, and the banks are gonna wanna give you more money because they know that you're in a great location. So understand, Never compromise location. Um, you want that DCR to be at least a 1.25. Um, the more units you have, the better. That's how you make the most money in real estate. 16 is the greatest, is the greatest, the holy grail. Um, and we haven't even talked about rent increases, right? So look for properties that 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 may be managed by an older person or older couple that may need some assistance with getting that pro or, or that not necessarily need assistance, but who may just be tired of managing the property. You know, it could just be in the family, the, the, the father or grandfather or great-grandfather probably had the property and the family just took it over. 
and they never increased the rent on the property. The property just stayed where it was. It stayed $1,000 per rent, but the market rent suggests that it should be at $1,500. So now you know that, oh my God, okay, you know what? These properties, these units are $500 below value. So if I was to get the property for X price, right? I can get into the property and I can take $500 and in, I can increase the rents up to $500 to meet the market rate, okay? And, and then I take my cap rate, okay? I take my cap rate, and I hope I'm not going too deep with you guys, but I take my cap rate, which is my return that I'm getting on a month-to-month -month basis, that I project I'm gonna get on a month-to-month -month basis. I divide my rent increases by my cap rate and that gives me my new value of the property. All right. So just by finding a property that's undervalued can automatically um, increase the value of the property as soon as you do that. So that, that now we're now we're talking about the multiplier effect. That's the multiplier effect. So find the property. You want it to be in a great location, great schools. If there's a Starbucks, if there's a Whole Foods around, always, always, always get the best locations. Never deal and dabble in, in property that is in bad location. I always say, if it's cheap to get, it's going to be hell to rent. If it's cheap to rent, it's going to be hell to rent, okay? All right. So you always want to be focused on that because the if you may you maybe say Mike I can give me a property a house man for a hundred thousand dollars I can get a tenant in there that's gonna give me a thousand dollars a month okay um, that that right there is 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 suicidal because you have to always understand and always factor in the buyer okay it's gonna be harder for you to to relinquish the property maybe easy for you to get but it's gonna be harder for you to sell and understand. You get your money when you sell the property. Cash flow, the cash flow that you receive is only a benefit, is only a perk while you wait for the asset to appreciate in value. In real estate, you're looking for the appreciation metric. You're not looking just for the cash flow. The cash flow is the benefit and putting your money to work while you wait for the appreciation. Once you get the appreciation, then you can go back to the bank and then you can refinance the property, pull money out, take that money because you don't pay taxes on that money because um, that's debt, by the way. So you could take money out the property and then go and invest into another property or just use the money to do whatever. So I want you guys to be focused on that. So location, never compromise location. Always be in a great location. Always look for the DCR. You want that DCR to be at least a 1.25. The more doors you have, the higher the value of the property. The more doors you have, the, the higher the value of the property. And you may say, well, Mike, what if I find the property? What do I do next? But well, once you find the property, okay, you need to get it under contract, right? So you need to find out exactly um, how much money you're able to uh, use as your down payment, okay? Do you have enough help from your family, from your friends to be able to put down a down payment? Okay, most lenders are going to want to see 20% down. Guys, listen, it's, it's not difficult to get the money. It is not difficult at all to get the money. You just have to continue to network, build your network, go to real estate conferences, go to real estate conventions, go out, be out, network, get you a database, get you a database because once you get you a database, now you can have these Monday meetings or these Tuesday meetings where you're bringing on different real estate um, professionals. You're talking about real estate and now you're now you're pulling in people who have money that who may not want to invest on their own, but they just want to be a passive investor. They just want to put their money to work. So now you're building up an audience. Now you now you can go out and start you a fund. You can use other people's money. I talk about this a lot on my, on my YouTube channel. You want to have a large audience of people so that you can create your fund so you can use other people's money and put that money to work for you that is the holy grail guys you look at every successful um major investor these are what they this is what they do look we'll look at warren buffett warren buffett said just one interesting thing right warren buffett said that his investors look at berkshire hathaway as a way of saving money that probably went over some of your head. Some of you probably didn't go over your head, right? He, Their investors look at Berkshire Hathaway as a safe way to save money.
So meaning there are people that want to save their money. They don't want to save it in the bank because they're not getting the return on their money. So they would put their money with Berkshire Hathaway. They would take their money, put it with Berkshire Hathaway and hope that they're going to see a return on a monthly basis. Berkshire Hathaway takes the money. They go out and they go buy other companies with that money. They go out and buy other companies. Now, other investors are interested in investing with them. They do the same thing. They rent and repeat. You look at Ray Dalio. People put their money, put their money with Ray Dalio, right? He's worth $18 billion. Okay. You look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk is constantly, constantly, constantly getting attention. All right. No one out there is giving Elon Musk on Twitter money, right? But he's staying, he's staying in the mindset of people so that they will always think that, man, this man is a brilliant guy. This guy is a brilliant guy. You know what? I want to be a part of him. I can't do what he do. But how can I be, how can I get close to him? How can I be involved in what he's doing? They go out and now they go and invest in SpaceX or they go out and invest, invest in Tesla uh, because they see the innovativeness with Elon Musk. So raising the money, guys, is that hard. It's not difficult. You just have to start. You have to start. Okay, and the easiest way to start, the easiest way to start is by looking in your back door. Don't try to go from state to state. Don't go state to state, all right? Try to stay in your backyard. Find a deal in your backyard. There are many deals in your backyard. In another episode, I'm gonna do another video where we just talk about deals. I'm gonna go through from state to state and I'm gonna pick random states and I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna find deals that will cash flow. If you need to do one door, do one door, all right? But make sure if you're gonna do one door, make sure you do it in a great location. Make sure that there's great schools. Make sure that... It's going to cash flow day one. Do not try to find property that's not cash flowing day one. You need a property that's easy to rent. You need to already have the buyer in mind. Who's going to buy your property once you buy it? These are things, this is called underwriting. Who's going to buy the property? You don't buy a property just because you think that you can get $1,000. No, that's, the, that's the, the worst way to invest is by speculation. So many people speculated with Bitcoin. So many people speculate in the stock market. Don't speculate in real estate because you will get burned. Have a game plan. And you can do this. We can make this money. We can do it together. All right? So, hope this video finds you well. Um, just some tips, man. That I, I, Like I said before, the sweet spot is 16. Um, I promise you guys, I promise you guys, if you really just pay attention to the, to the, to the, you know, to the underwriting piece of real estate, you can make a, a hell of a lot of money, guys. So, hope this video finds you well. It is Friday. Uh, my, 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 one of my sisters is getting ready to uh, have a birthday party. So I'm going to get dressed and get ready for that. So hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful Friday. If you have any questions, I want you guys to like and subscribe to this channel because that's the only way in which I continue to do these videos. All right. Peace, love, and soul.